Has everyone seen Best Buy's new logo? They changed it a few months ago. The text has changed from black to white, the yellow price tag is still part of it, but in a smaller way and down there in the corner. I like it, but this is a big change. That old logo was so iconic, it's been there since the late 80s, which is my entire life, so it may take some time to get used to it, but I think it's fitting. Best Buy itself has changed so much over the past few years, maybe it's time for a new logo as well. Best Buy started out small, as one location in St. Paul, Minnesota, with seven or eight employees. This is the guy who started it, Richard Scholes. In 1966, he remortgaged his house to get some capital that he used to open that store. It specialized in stereos and was called Sound of Music. Now, when I hear the phrase Sound of Music, I think of the Best Picture winning musical, which turns out was released in 1965, the year before he opened the store, so I heavily suspect he took influence from it. Now, in the first year of business, sales reached 173 thousand dollars and it just grew steadily from there over the next 15 years or so it built up to a handful of locations around the Minnesota area but in the early 80s some changes were made that helped bring them to that next level in 1982 the decision was made to expand their product offerings from just speakers and audio equipment they would now offer appliances and other electronics such as VCRs it was all a big hit and sales grew to 9.3 million dollars at this point the next year they changed the name to Best Buy. The year after that, they introduced these super stores, and again, it was all a big hit. In those three years, they transformed the business into the one that we know today. Within five years, their sales grew from that 9.3 million into 239 million. I think from this point, we can say that they were up and running, to a point where in the 1990s, the only two stores of this kind even worth mentioning were Best Buy and Circuit City. By 1992, Best Buy sales were up to 929 million and then the next year they were up to 1.6 billion the two were in direct competition with each other I'll cover it all in more detail in the future when I make a video about Circuit City but I think we all know how the battle ended I guess Best Buy won, because in 2009, Circuit City filed for bankruptcy and closed all of their stores. At first glance, you would think that this is fantastic news for Best Buy. Historically, their largest and most direct competitor was now gone, a perfect opportunity to take advantage and scoop up their market share. Do you remember that game Slither.io, or whatever it's called, when one of the other snakes died, you would eat up all those glowing dots that they left behind and then become bigger? I think you know what I'm saying. Here, but that's not really what happened. It turns out that the entire industry was having troubles. I think a more accurate metaphor would be the giant snake coming by and terrorizing all of them. The little snakes being Best Buy, Circuit City, we can put Radio Shack in that group as well. You're probably already thinking it, but the big snake would represent Amazon and the other online retailers. Now, obviously, this is a very simplified summary of the situation to a point where it's almost ridiculous, but that is what was happening. Circuit City and Radio Shack didn't really make it through it, or were at least tremendously harmed by it. And around 2012, 2013, it was looking like things were going to go the same way for Best Buy. Let me show you just how bad things were looking. I like this one. It's a popular article from Forbes from 2012 called Why Best Buy is Going Out of Business Gradually. Right in the beginning, electronics retailer Best Buy is headed for the exits. I can't say when exactly, but my guess is that it's only a matter of time, maybe a few more years. Then, it's sort of what I was saying, it says, consider a few key metrics. Despite the disappearance of competitors, including Circuit City, the company is losing market share. I'd say this was a very fair assessment at the time. This article's from 2012, and I would say at 2012, 2013, they were at their lowest. Here's what I'm trying to illustrate. Overall, things went very well for Best Buy, from the early 80s up until around 2009. From 2009 till maybe 2013, they were losing it. Then from 2013 until today, they brought it back. Now it's nice when I can pull up their sales graph and it tells that exact story, but it's not the case here. And that does show how these top line sales don't mean everything. If you were to just go by this, you'd say their best year was 2012 and they've been falling ever since. Let me show you a more applicable graph. 
comparable store sales. This is basically a comparison of how each store sold in comparison to the previous year. So in 2009, on average, each store sold 1.3% less than it did the year before. You definitely want to see positive numbers here, and I can tell you the 10 years before this range were all positive. Their first negative year was in 2009, and four of the next five were negative as well, followed by four straight positive years once again, 2018 being the best one. Now I say this perfectly illustrates a rise, a fall, and a rise again. I should also mention that their only two years of negative income occurred in 2012 and 2013. And then their stock price was struggling. I think I've proven that this was a bad time for Best Buy. I mean, you probably knew it already, but they brought it back. Their stock price right now is hitting all-time highs. Like I already showed, same store sales are up, there's positive income, Moody's just improved their credit rating. If you look at their earning reports or their balance sheet, almost everything is looking pretty good. Let me talk about how they did it. Best Buy in general is smaller today than it was five years ago. They have fewer stores in the US, plus on average their stores are smaller, but where they've really shrunk is internationally. For the international viewers, in the UK, if you're familiar with Carphone Warehouse, they used to own half of it, but they've since sold it. The same goes for Phone House throughout the rest of Europe. In Canada, they used to own Future Shop, and they've either closed them or converted them into Best Buys, still a much smaller Canadian presence overall. In China, Five Star Appliance Company, they used to own the majority stake, but have since sold it. In Mexico, well, actually Mexico is the only place they've grown since 2013, but not by much. They've clearly increased their emphasis on the North American markets, specifically the United States, while decreasing their size in general. And this is all a huge part of why their revenue graph looks the way it does. The second way they're doing better is they found ways to separate themselves from Amazon and the other online retailers. Are you familiar with the term showrooming? It's the practice of visiting a store or stores in order to examine a product before buying it online at a lower price. I've done it. You go down to Best Buy to look at a new phone or computer, then go home and buy it online from a different company. What a terrible thing for Best Buy, and a great thing for Amazon. Best Buy is covering all the costs that are involved for you to look at a product, employees and floor space and everything else, and Amazon is making the sale. Best Buy is spending money so their competitor can sell more stuff. That was maybe their biggest issue five years ago, and they needed to address it fast. Here's how they did it. They brought in a new CEO who, to many, seemed like an odd choice. He wasn't really experienced in electronics, but rather his background was in hospitality and travel. He used to be the CEO of a travel company. To put it simple, he was more concerned with the customer experience than anything else. This is when they started a turnaround plan, labeled Renew Blue. The plan was centered around cutting their expenses and strengthening their services. It was a lot about fixing what was broken. Okay. So we ensured that we were price competitive, we improved the customer experience. They managed to cut billions in cost, and this allowed them to lower their prices. Price matching was a smart move. If they can match that Amazon price, why would you go home to buy it from them when you could just buy it there? It's easier. But on top of that, Best Buy does have a huge advantage over Amazon in terms of convenience. Just think of the little things. Maybe the charging cable for your phone stops working. You don't want to wait for Amazon to ship it to you. You want it as soon as possible. By making their price is comparable, they've made themselves an attractive option in that situation. As far as strengthening their customer service, that involved making sure that their in-store staff is knowledgeable about the products that they're selling, because that's more important now than ever before. Along these same lines, strengthening services like Geek Squad? A quick personal story here. I had an issue with my computer about a week ago, and I didn't know what to do, so I brought it to Best Buy. The guy from the Geek Squad fixed it in about 5 minutes and didn't charge me anything including the trip, the whole thing took 30 minutes, and it gave me a great idea for a video topic.
Their new customer service focus also involves following up after the sale is made, offering services where they'll install your fancy high-tech doorbell or mount your TV. As of last year, their Renew Blue plan has concluded and they've marked the end of their turnaround phase and now have entered a growth phase that they've labeled Best Buy 2020 Building the New Blue. The emphasis here seems to be on doubling down on their services and building customer relationships, specifically when it comes to smart homes. They view a large potential in that market and hope to capture a good percentage of it. This includes their in-home advisor program where essentially for free they'll have an expert come out to your home and tell you how they can help you with your electronics or smart home needs. There's more that can be said about the turnaround. The whole store within a store concept was a big part of it. It builds relationships with the other companies and gets people in their store which is always a good thing. There's also their increased emphasis on online sales but I feel that one's more obvious. Let me summarize. Amazon and the internet changed the market, and they contributed to the failures of Circuit City and Radio Shack and almost Best Buy, but they reacted to it. They saw a few years that were less than impressive, and it motivated them to make big changes. They shrunk in size, they put more emphasis on their North American operations, while bringing in a new CEO that put emphasis on cutting costs and customer interactions, along with many other changes that all have seemed to work. They've implemented a successful turnaround around plan and are now focused on growth. Let me know in the comments, where do you stand on all of this? Do you agree with the reasoning I provided for their comeback or do you think there's more to the story that I failed to mention? And do you think the comeback will last? Do they have a stable future ahead or not? Also, what do you think of the new logo? Is it indeed a fitting change to go along with a changing company? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.